Hello everyone, welcome back to Bytes of CC. So this is going to be a last minute revision video uh, on P, NP, NP hard and NP complete problem. So this is the definition for P class problem which is taken directly from the book John E. Hopcroft. So it says that a Turing machine M is said to be of time complexity Tn if whenever M is given an input W of length N, M halts after making at most Tn moves regardless of whether or not m is accepted. So this definition applies to any function tn, uh, where tn can be 50 n square or tn can be 3 to the power n plus 5 uh, n to the power 4. Now we shall be interested predominantly in the case where tn is a polynomial in n, like this one. We say a language, now this is very important, we say a language L is in class P if there is some polynomial uh, Tn such that L equals to Lm, that is the language accepted by the Turing machine M, for some deterministic, this is very very important, deterministic Turing machine M of time complexity Tn. Simply put, P is that class that includes all languages that are accepted by some deterministic Turing machine in polynomial time without regard to the degree of the polynomial. So the degree can be 100, 1000, anything. So n to the power anything uh, can be accepted uh, as a polynomial time uh, problem and it can belong to the class P. So uh, since we have a P class problem, similarly, we have an NP class problem. So here, so the P class problem was accepted by a deterministic uh, Turing machine and in this case, it is accepted by a non-deterministic Turing machine that runs in polynomial time. So both runs in polynomial time. One is a deterministic Turing machine and the other is accepted by a non-deterministic Turing machine. Now, when a problem is accepted by a deterministic Turing machine, it can also be accepted by a non-deterministic Turing machine. So we can safely say that P is a subclass of NP. But can the reverse be said? Well, that is an open problem. We can't yet say that what is accepted by a non-deterministic Turing machine can be accepted by a deterministic Turing machine. So research is still going on on this area. Now suppose there is an NP problem. There is a class of NP problems in fact. And there is another problem X which belongs to this class NP. And now there, if any NP problem is polynomial time reducible to this problem X, we can say that X is an NP complete problem. And now suppose there is another problem y and this time we do not know if y belongs to NP. So y is belongs to some unknown class. We don't know what class uh, this problem belongs to. And now if an NP problem or any NP problem is polynomial time reducible to this particular problem y, we can say that y is an NP hard problem. So, so for a problem to be NP complete, there are two conditions that need to be met. Number one, that problem has to be in NP. And number two, every problem or language, to be very specific, X prime in NP is polynomial time reducible to X. Now, the difference between an NP complete in, and NP hard lies in this factor. So in both the cases, or in both the um, type of problems, any problem, any NP problem is polynomial time reducible to this problem. But when it is NP complete, we know that that problem is in NP. Whereas if we do not know where the problem belongs to, we tag that as NP hard. So there, is, uh, this is where the problem, uh, sorry, the difference between NP complete and NP hard problem lies. And from here, there are two more theorems which follows. That is, if P1 is NP complete, P2 is in NP, and there is a polynomial time reduction of P1 
to P2, then P2 is NP complete. So now if we can say, suppose this X is this uh, P2, sorry, X is I think uh, P1, sorry, X is P1 and there is some problem which is an NP problem and that we call that as P2. Now if P1 is polynomial time converted to P2, like in polynomial time P1 is converted to P2, then P2 also is an NP complete problem. And now if some NP complete problem P prime is in P, that is P class problem, it belongs to a P class problem, then P equals to NP. Alright. Now let's move on to the closure properties. So NP uh, is like reverse, it is covered by reverse union, concatenation and clean closure. And since P is a subclass of NP, P is also covered by reverse union, concatenation and clean closure. And P is also covered by complementation. Now what about NP? Now this is again another open problem. We cannot really say that NP is covered by complementation. That is not entirely true. Also, if we say that NP is not covered by complementation, that also is not completely true. So we actually don't know that if NP is covered by complementation. And now this is uh, a list of some well-known problems of NP, NP complete and NP hard types. I would uh, ask you to take a screenshot of this particular uh, slide. So you can remember because questions might be like you might not be said, uh, they might not say that this particular problem is an NP complete problem. In, uh, Instead, they might say there is a three set problem or a subset sum problem or a vertex problem or a click problem. So questions might uh, be based on that. So you have to remember which is a well-known NP complete problem or which is a well-known NP hard problem and so on. Now let's take a um, couple of questions. So. It is said that suppose a polynomial time algorithm is discovered that correctly computes the largest click in a given graph. In this scenario, which, of the, uh, which one of the following represents the correct Venn diagram of the complexity classes P, NP and NP complete? Now first you have to determine where this largest click in a given graph is. So once more, if I show you this one, so this click problem belongs to an NP complete, like this is an NP complete problem, the click problem. So this is an NP uh, C and it is said that this is um, like, uh, this can be solved in polynomial time. So if we move back to here, if some NP complete problem is in P, then P equals to NP. So coming uh, to this point, so P is P. From that uh, theorem, we can say that NP is also P. And now NP complete problem. So NP complete problem, when it is solved by a polynomial time algorithm, naturally this also belongs to the class P. So therefore, both like P is equals to NP and it is also uh, equal to the NP complete thing. So this is what we have for this particular scenario. So this is the right answer. Now if you do not remember the theorem that I showed to you right now, you can like logically solve it like this. Now since it is an NP complete problem, any NP problem is polynomial time reducible to an NP complete problem. So, and this is uh, solved in some polynomial time and that is given. So, polynomial time to convert to this problem and polynomial time to convert to this problem. So, ultimately NP 
problem can be solved in polynomial time. So that way also we can say that p equals to np equals to np complete. This is if you do not remember that particular theorem, you can also tackle this logically. So for this kind of problem, first you will need to detect the class of the problem and then you will have to apply the rules accordingly. And now this is the last problem which says that there are decision two decision problems q1 and q2. So q1 reduces in polynomial time to 3 sat and 3 sat reduces in polynomial time to q2. So which is the most consistent uh, of the following statements that are given. Now uh, since now first of all 3 set belongs to the class of np complete problem now this np complete problem which also belongs to the class of np because otherwise it wouldn't have been np complete right so an np complete uh, so uh, an np problem is polynomial time reducible to q2 so naturally q2 is an np hard problem right And now, so that is solved. Now, Q1 reduces in polynomial time to 3 sat. So, some problem reduces in polynomial time to some NP complete problem. So, we can say in this cases, we can say that this is as hard as an NP complete problem. And something as hard as an NP complete problem can safely be said that this is Q1 is definitely an NP problem. So, here Q2 is NP hard and now Q1 is in NP. This is the most appropriate answer because Q1 is np hard no really if you just go by the rules you can't say that q1 is np hard and then uh, q2 is in np well we can't really say that we we don't know we can't say that we can't assume that and q1 and q2 are both np hard no the safest option is this q2 is np hard and q1 is as hard as an np complete problem and we can say that q1 is in np so that's all for today and good luck. Thank you for watching.